Hello and welcome to another episode of Katie the Science Lady. I'm Mrs. Jacobson and for today's topic we compare and contrast prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. We're also going to talk about endosymbiotic theory. So let's learn together. Okay, let's get started. Today we have a kind of a laundry list of things to go over. We're gonna start by talking about endosymbiotic theory, which sounds much more complicated than it really is. And then we're going to finish up by talking about the differences and similarities between eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. Additionally, we're going to touch on plant versus animal cell at the end, just to make sure that we've got everything straight. So let's start with endosymbiotic theory. It sounds complicated, but if you break down the word, it's really pretty simple. Endo means within, sim means together, and biotic means life. So it's living things coming together within, and that's really what it is. So this theory is that eukaryotic cells came from a symbiosis or coming together of prokaryotic cells. So prokaryotic plus prokaryotic, you put them together and you've got a eukaryotic cell. Now these prokaryotic cells were of two different kinds. The first kind was theorized to use oxygen, or that's where the aerobic part comes from, oxygen, to make energy. And the second, called photosynthetic prokaryotic cells, that was thought to use light to make energy. So we have these two different power sources, oxygen and light. And then they came together, and the theory is that they came to live symbiotically in the same cell, which we now refer to as a eukaryote. Now, if we look at this, which came first, pro or euk? Well, we've got a prokaryote that just uses oxygen for energy. That's the aerobic prokaryote. And then we have the photosynthetic prokaryote over here, which says I photosynthesize, which it does. And when those came together into another cell, we can see some of the similarities between our modern mitochondria and chloroplasts. Again, this is a scientific theory. Theory does not mean 100% fact, nor does it mean it's just an idea. Theories are rigorously tested in science, so it's something that we're always 98% sure, but as scientists, we like to give a little wiggle room because nothing's ever 100% sure. Let's start talking about eukaryotes and prokaryotes. All cells have three things in common. We've talked about this before. They all have a cell membrane to allow things in and out. They have DNA. DNA is our genetic material. Now, some cells may have RNA as a genetic material, which is a very similar structured um, molecule. They also have ribosomes. Ribosomes' job is to synthesize or make proteins, and proteins do all the work in your cell. You need proteins or not much is gonna get done. Prokaryotic cells have free-floating circular DNA. Now, I don't mean that their DNA just looks like kind of curly Q. I mean that it's a literal circle. It doesn't have a start or an end, it's a, a link. They also have their DNA located in their nucleoid region. They do not have a nucleus. This is why I use the rhyme, pro says no to a nucleus and organelles. When we talk about eukaryotic cells, they have a nucleus and they do have organelles. But my favorite rhyme is euk has a nuke. It just kind of sounds snappier to me and helps me remember it. The funny thing is a lot of my students, I'll hear them chanting in their heads and sometimes under their breath, you has a nuke, you has a nuke, you has a nuke, as they take their quizzes and tests. If it helps them remember, I'm happy. Here's another comparison side by side, just in case you're more of a visual person, this may help you a little bit. Prokaryotes are smaller cells, usually about 50 times smaller than a eukaryotic cell. They do not have membrane bound organelles. Remember, they do have ribosomes, but we're not really counting them in those membrane-bound ones. Membrane-bound organelles would be things like mitochondria that have that internal compartment, that kind of wiggly structure inside of them. Their DNA is circular and it free floats in the cytoplasm. It does not have a nice nucleus around it to protect it, it's just floating. And those were considered the first cells to evolve. They're simpler, which makes sense. And their other name is bacteria. If someone says bacteria, you can think, oh, that's a prokaryote. And if you hear your teacher say prokaryote, they also mean bacteria. They are synonymous or the same. 
So when we talk about eukaryotes, they are larger and more complex. You're going to kind of catch the drift here. It's going to be very simple to follow. They do have membrane bound organelles. Their DNA is linear. So they have single strands of DNA. Now it's incredibly long, miles and miles, which sounds weird, miles and miles long of DNA, but it's single. It doesn't connect to itself and create a circle. And it is found in the nucleus. Eukes have a nuke. Types of eukaryotic cells and organisms that have eukaryotic cells are plants, animals, fungi, and these kind of strange group called protists. We'll cover them later in the year and in different videos. They both have a cell membrane, they both have genetic material, and they both use ribosomes to make proteins. That's one of the most important things, is remembering that they do have things in common. They're not complete opposites, but they are pretty different still. Now remember prokaryotes and their structure, you see they have ways to move. This long flagella here helps them move, as well as these cilia, uh, cilia sometimes called pili, on the outside of the, of the prokaryote. They've got several tough layers, including their cell membrane, cell wall, and capsule. And then they've got their DNA free-floating in this nucleoid region here in the center. Eukaryotes are more circular. They have all their membrane-bound organelles, as you can see. They have their nucleus and nucleolus containing their DNA in the very center of the cell here. And it's kind of interesting to see pictures of eukaryotic cells. We don't always get to see the nice circular shape because they are very flexible and fluid. But in this picture here, we do see that they've got a nice circular um, shape to their cell membrane. And we also have the nucleus in prominence here. Now we're going to compare the cell types. Again, some of us are more graphical learners. We like to have things organized. So we've got prokaryotes versus eukaryotes, and which one has a nucleus, organelles, or DNA? Eukaryotes have a nucleus, eukaryotes have organelles, and the DNA in prokaryotes is free-floating, while the DNA in eukaryotes is in the nucleus. Let's quickly talk about plant and animal cells. Plants have a cell wall. It keeps them rigid and helps them grow taller. That's why trees are so much taller than people. Well, one of the many reasons. Plants have a large central vacuole. It can fill up with water. It can fill up with nutrients, a number of things. Remember, if a plant is wilting, it's because that vacuole is emptied. There's not water left in that cell um, in that vacuole. Once you water your plants again or put your flower in water, that vacuole will fill back up with water and your plant no longer looks wilted. Plants have chloroplasts to allow photosynthesis, which is turning sun at light energy into glucose sugar so they can make their own energy. They have a rigid geometric shape. And animals' cells are pretty much the opposite. They have very, very similar things. They both have lots of organelles, but they do not have a cell wall. They have really small or no vacuoles. They do not have chloroplasts. I really wish we had chloroplasts. It would be very cool to be able to go out in the sun and make our own energy and not have to eat. And animal cells are usually rounded in shape, nice and organic shaped, not quite as geometric. Here's an example of a plant cell. We can see here with this green outline that it is more of a geometric shape. We've got that nice rectangle there. Oh man, I had way too much fun with the animations. And then we have our animal cell, which is much more circular, more rounded. Oh yeah. And if we compare these, we can go through this pretty quickly again. We have our plant cells and our animal cells, and a couple of characteristics to the side. Plant cells are geometric, while animal cells are more round shaped. Plant cells have large vacuoles. Animal cells have small or no vacuoles. Plant cells have a cell wall, animal cells do not. Plant cells have chloroplasts, animal cells do not. But animal cells have something called centrioles. These are organelles that are going to be helping during cell division. All right, let's recap endosymbiotic theory. It holds that eukaryotic cells evolved from prokaryotic cells over millions of years. Ancient prokaryotes that could use oxygen to make energy and ancient prokaryotes that could use sunlight to make energy are thought to have become modern-day mitochondria and chloroplasts.
Thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe for more biology videos. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something and I'll see you later.